There's been historic investments in education, uh, our infrastructure, the environment, housing, uh, economic development, and more. And now this tax it on with a direct investment in the residents who live here in the Commonwealth uh, by really making Massachusetts more competitive, competitive, giving people a reason to stay, and keeping things going. And that's something I look, I'm really looking forward to see the long-term effects of what this legislation has for us here in the Commonwealth moving forward. Uh, I do want to recognize a couple of our uh, guests that we have here with us from our city council. We have our city council president, Elizabeth Kaczynskis. Uh, from, uh, we also have city councilor Ron Cormier, Alec Dernalowitz, and Paul Tassoni. Uh, from our school committee, we have Rachel Cormier and Ann Hurst. And joining us from the city of Fitchburg, my fellow mayor, Steve DiNatale. Uh, but without further ado, I have the honor and privilege of introducing you all to our Commonwealth's great Lieutenant Governor, Kim Driscoll, who's been a constant friend for us here in Gardner. I think this is her fourth or fifth visit just in the past nine months to the I city. I love it here. I love it here. So much so she knew where to get coffee this morning. <laughs> uh, but uh, she's been a constant friend to us here and just a great partner, ladies and gentlemen, Kim Driscoll. Thank you, Mayor. Always, always great to be in Gardner. And uh, I remember Rep Zlotnick, you and I last year touring a food pantry and the school was like one week delayed opening and uh, folks were so excited about it. And then to see it in person, like beautiful, amazing, the power of uh, I think local leadership and investments coming together to really serve our kids. And I think that's actually a good theme for why we're here today. So thrilled to be able to celebrate, you know, 20 years in the making tax cuts. They're gonna go back to support working families, older adults, small businesses, people who are trying to do their best to make our Commonwealth a place that they can grow and thrive. And one of the reasons I think the governor really wanted to push to make sure these tax uh, relief, this, these tax cuts became, uh, became law was because of the impact it can have uh, every single day to families. Uh, we both come from a working class background and know that dollars in pockets means you can do more to spend that money locally. Uh, I know I'm buying my regular things at the groceries every week and somehow the tab continues to go up even though I'm not buying more things. And I think a lot of people uh, can relate to that. I know that so many families are taking care of young kids and also helping with older adults in their lives. And the meaningful impact that having money back in the pocket can mean for both segments of the population, our youngest generation and our older generation, that's what's included in these tax cuts. There really is somebody, something for everyone to be able to have additional resources that they need now, knowing that things are going up and being in a position to not only return some money to folks on the ground, that will be spent in neighborhoods, but also to make the sorts of investments as part of a budget. It's a real package deal, making the investments we need to grow and thrive while also making sure people have additional resources to help right now. And so thrilled to be here to make sure we have full advantage taken of these dollars. We know that when it comes to things like the earned income tax credit, 80% of the people who qualify for that take advantage of it. There's a gap. 20% of our earned income tax credit recipients are not taking advantage of that. We know the senior circuit tax break, and not everybody's aware of that. And so we need all of you not only to showcase what this tax relief will mean to you, but to help us spread the word to make sure every senior is getting that senior, senior center tax, senior circuit tax break credit, that every uh, low-income individual who qualifies for EITC, the, a double the benefit, is taking advantage of that. So we're relying on you to be our megaphones to help us spread the word to make sure we're helping people in communities and none of this would have been possible uh, without having real leadership out of the state house I'm so proud to be a partner uh, in this administration uh, making things go but the governor pushed for this we worked hard with the legislature we didn't have to push them too hard but it th that sense of urgency like let's get this across the finish line yesterday was a really big day to see that teamwork in action when we come together, like really big things, really powerful things, things that have an impact on people's lives can happen. And um, it was a really special day, led by uh, our own governor, my partner, my favorite teammate, Governor Healy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, LG. <clears throat> Thanks so much, LG. It's, uh, it's really great for both of us to be here today and to be here celebrating with our colleagues and government something really, really good. And, um, it is a big deal what happened yesterday with the signing of this tax relief package. We know it's going to make a meaningful difference in people's lives. A reason we wanted to get out and about around the state after signing it is because, as the LG said, we really do want people to understand what this means for them and their families. We understand right now so many folks across Massachusetts are struggling. And we say that as people who know and believe that Massachusetts are the greatest state in the country. 
We're the greatest state in the country, but we've got to make it affordable. We've got to make it work for everyone. And when we started our administration, we had three goals. Make Massachusetts more affordable, make it more competitive, and make it more equitable. And that's basically what this tax package is about. We're grateful to our colleagues in the legislature, Rep. Slotnick and others, for uh, signing this into law. We're grateful for the input of our mayors, um, Mayor Nicholson, uh, Mayor Di Natale, others who, you know, helped inform this process. And we're really grateful to all the families who came forward and shared their stories about the things that they were dealing with, with high costs for groceries, for gas, for childcare, for health care. And this was really an effort to figure out, okay, what can we do? What can we do right now to get relief to people? Um, we put out a press release. You can read about all the particulars. I think most importantly, you're going to hear from people who were directly impacted by this. But we know that, you know, focusing on our seniors, our parents, our caregivers, our children, some of the most vulnerable among us, is super, super important, and we will all do better as a state. We will all do better as a state when those credits are there and kicking in. We also know it's important that we have a growing and thriving economy, and especially in a time of inflation, we are always looking for ways for a Massachusetts economy and workforce to be supported, and that's why, importantly, elements of this tax package are very good for the business community, okay? We've got to be able to do both. And I know that here in Massachusetts, we can do both. I also want to say that this team is really committed to Central Mass, really committed to Central Mass. And, you know, um, it's so great to be here today in Gardner. What a wonderful place, this beautiful school. We were just in a gymnasium and in a classroom. And we do this work because it's all about those little people, you know, in those rooms. And our job is to make sure that they have all the opportunity. And that means opportunity not just for the first class education that they're receiving here. It means access to health care. And that's why we set about, you know, conducting a study for what we've got to do here uh, in Central Mass and North County to make sure that people have access to health care, make sure that people have access to food, make sure that people have access to the work opportunities and the higher ed opportunities that we want to support. So I just wanted to say that, you know, having the opportunity to be here today, we're very committed to the folks in this region and look forward to, to, to the partnership um, in the time uh, ahead. And that includes things like free school meals, remember, breakfast and lunch. There's some things we got done in, in a quick eight months that we're proud of. Free school meals, free community college for everyone over 25 or 25 and over, expanding access to childcare and, uh, and pre-K and significant housing investments with more to come on that front. We know there's more work to do, and we are going to keep fighting every day for the people uh, of Massachusetts. And speaking of the people of Massachusetts, I want to give an opportunity to introduce uh, our terrific representative, uh, John Slotnick, to come forward, and then we're going to hear from Nancy Mahoney and Heather D.C. and Luisa Fernandez to talk a little bit about what this package actually means to them. But, Representative, thank you for your leadership, thank you for your partnership, and thank you for helping bring home this important tax package. Um, well, um, you know, I, I, first, I first have to give some kudos to, uh, to Principal Martin, who is my high school homeroom teacher. Um, but this was, yeah. So proud. <laughs> um, but this was very impressive today. Um, you know, I think as we were we were walking around, I think you've done a great job here, uh, and you'll continue to do a great job. I know. So I want to make sure we we uh, recognize that today. So so I want to thank the governor and lieutenant governor for really getting the ball rolling on this this tax cut package. Um, getting a bill passed isn't easy. Uh, getting a tax bill, especially tax cuts, isn't easy, uh, especially when the end result ended up being almost unanimous the whole way through. That's not an easy thing to do uh, through the legislature pro legislative process, but it was the governor and lieutenant governor you know, who continued to put their shoulder behind it uh, you know, to make sure that that got done. Because you know, the sign here says, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, what is <laughs> saving families money, which is exactly what this bill does. And in a community like ours, whether you know, the, the different provisions that are in this, and, and one especially important in the rural parts of the state like we are now, the provisions for, uh, for septic systems, are so critical to, uh, to helping families out. And what the end result of that is, you know, for communities like ours, is that's more money in people's pockets, but it's more money in the local economy. 
when this is, you know, when this is fully implemented and people are really feeling its impact, it's going to be millions of more dollars uh, in this region's economy. Uh, and the impact of that we're going to feel for years. Uh, it's going to be good for families, it's going to be good for local businesses, and it's going to be good for the entire uh, economy and community out here in North Central Mass. Um, so I want to, you know, I really want to thank the Governor and Lieutenant Governor again for getting the ball rolling on this. Thank my colleagues, of course, for uh, voting for this uh, and, and hanging in there to, uh, to make sure that this got done uh, and got over the finish line because it is, it is critically important, uh, like everything the Governor and Lieutenant Governor said. So, so thank you both and thank you all for coming out today. Thank you. I'd now like to introduce Nancy uh, Mahoney, who needs no introduction, VP of Family and Children's Services at Making Opportunities Count. Nancy. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Making Opportunity Count, I'd like to extend our gratitude to Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for visiting us today. Hearing Gardner. We're very happy. Um, my name is Nancy Mahoney, and I am the Vice President of Children and Family Services. I oversee our Child Care and Head Start programs at Making Opportunity Count. As a community action agency of North Central Massachusetts, we witness firsthand the effects of the many rising costs that force families to make really tough choices, often leaving them with just one or two paychecks away from homelessness. We hear families' frustrations, worries, and struggles. In 2022, our agency served more than 9,800 families in North Central. <clears throat> in Gardner, 1,152 children participated in our Child Care and Head Start program as well as our WIC program. The Child and Family Tax Credit will provide much needed economic support to families and our neighbors. Every child who enters the door to our schools will be impacted by this um, package. We appreciate Governor Healy, uh, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll, and the legislator for provide, pr prioritizing families and children as we tackle complex issues. Thank you very much, Governor. Thank you. I'm happy to introduce Heather DC. Heather is an early Head Start educator here in Gardner, and she's also a parent in the, in the Head Start program. Heather? Good afternoon. My name is Heather DC, and I would first like to thank Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll for the visiting us today and giving the opportunity to share how the child and family tax credit will impact families. As a Head Start teacher and gardener, I've witnessed the growth of our children as they become fully engaged in their passions and discover their unique voices. We know our families struggle to afford basic needs and living expenses. Often that struggle carries into the classroom through the emotions of our children. The rising cost of groceries, gas, rent, and utilities had worry and frustration to families who are living paycheck to paycheck. Regardless of their financial situation, Head Start is here for stability, to be predictable, and we're here to love our children so that they are safe and cared for. The Child Family Tax Credit is going to help bring stability to families, including my household. I'm a single mom to a six-year-old son, Spencer, who has autism. Lately, I've been struggling financially, having only one source of income adds to my worries as a mother and a teacher. The best kiss gift we can give our children is our time and well-being. Sorry. <laughs> However, this can be difficult during financial stress because the children are feeling tax credit. I'll have one less thing to worry about. I won't have to stress over how to pay for my son's therapies, his child care, or buying groceries. I'll, it will give me some breathing room and ease my financial burdens. Sometimes families and children need breathing rooms to live th and thrive. I want to thank Healy and Driscoll Administration for putting families first. I'm happy to introduce Louisa Fernandez, a former Head Start parent and current member of Mox Head Start Policy Board, to say a few words. Mm. Well, uh, thank you. I'm sorry, Governor Hall. I'm sorry, and Lieutenant Governor. <laughs> Please go for the opportunity. <laughs> At least you cry first than me. Uh, for the opportunity to share my history and gratitude. My name is Luis Fernandez. My husband, my son, and I arrived in the United States in 2015 from Venezuela. When we arrived, we had our clothes, a few belongings, and each other. 
our situation was challenging as uh, we found ourselves speaking no English, homeless and undocumented, but we had dreams. MUG was the first organization to give me and my family a hand, allowing my son to have high quality care and education. At Head Start, I found a comprehensive support system that helped me to move forward and chase my dreams. When I received my work permit, the Massachusetts Public School System gave me the opportunity of my life by hiring me as a paraprofessional. That career helped me to learn the language and develop skills to help others. Today, I'm, a very, I'm very proud to be the Fitchburg Public Schools District Family and Community Engagement Coordinator. And my office is a resource, a resource center that help immigrant and vulnerable families. These are the same families that due to your dedication and diligence will benefit from this tax cut. Having additional relief to put food on the tables, pay utility bills, address debt, access transportation, or find childcare. This relief is the supportive hand that many families across the Commonwealth need during their own time of challenge. It is impossible not to take this opportunity to thank you for your great effort and support for immigrants who come to this country with a dream to provide with their families. As I mentioned, the key to this is, it, is accelerating the processing of work permits, and my personal history is a proof of that. I want to wrap up with sharing a phrase that I share whenever I can, and is that I am living my American dream. And my American dream is to have a voice in my community and have resources to help other families. Muchas gracias. Thank you all very much for joining us here uh, this morning. I want to thank uh, Superintendent Pellegrino and Principal Martin for allowing us to use this space here in the school. Uh, I want to thank m members of my team uh, from City Hall who are here as well, who are working with individuals who will directly benefit from these tax credits. And uh, I believe, Gov, it's going back to you. Thanks. Great. We're happy to um, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Mayor, and thank you for the outstanding job that you're doing here in Gardner. We're happy to take a few on-topic questions. Yeah. No, absolutely. <clears throat> I mean, that's what this is all about. That's why we do this work. And that's why the bill contained the language that it contained, is because we spent time, we'd heard from so many parents, we'd heard from so many organizations about the needs that they were facing and the needs facing our parents across communities throughout Massachusetts. And so um, I just want to say uh, a, a few things. First of all, thank you. Uh, it's very brave to get up and tell a very personal story and both Louisa and Heather, you did just that and you did so beautifully and in the most moving way and it's a story that people need to hear they need to hear across the state and it's one of the reasons we came out is because we wanted the opportunity to make sure that those stories are heard and reported on and to the organizations like mock and others who are out there on the front lines thank you for the work that you do and the work that you do has this exponential ripple effect because you literally change the trajectory, not just of one mother's life, but of the life of her kids. And so we're just so grateful to always be able to support and work in partnership with all of our wonderful service providers. But this is why we did it. Too many families are hurting. Uh, this is a state that um, of, of people of a lot of goodwill, and there's a lot of means in different places. And we've got to do a better job of making sure that everybody has a shot, that everybody has that opportunity, everybody has the support. Uh, for me, I'm struck listening to just the, the, the agony of stress. We all have stresses in our lives. Uh, we know that for families, financial stress, going to bed, not 
knowing how you're going to buy groceries that week or pay the electric bill or pay for the school uniform. I mean, these are, these are agonizing uh, feelings for parents to have. And some parents are on their own doing this. And so, you know, it's just, it's, it's really important that these stories be told and also that what is told is what's happening with this, with this credit. I mean, moving from, this is the, this is the largest, this is the largest credit for children and families in the country. And I'm proud that Massachusetts did that. And there were certain things, remember, that were put in place during COVID, during ARPA, by the federal government that went away. We wanted to make it permanent here in Massachusetts, and that's exactly what we did. We also eliminated things like having a cap for just two kids. So, you know, we made some important changes, um, real money going back in people's pockets, real, uh, real relief, and Massachusetts is now the leader, as we should be, in supporting our families. Is that it? Great. Well, go Wildcats. It was awesome. Thank you for the tour today. It was fantastic. And thank you to all school committee, everybody who is uh, working in support, superintendent, principal, our educators, uh, working in support of our, our young people and, and families. That leaves us. We're on the road. Where, where are we going Haverhill. next? Haverhill. We're going to Haverhill. Um, but this, uh, this was a great way to start the day, and we, uh, we're excited, and I, and I want people to leave with optimism about what's possible, even though we're in challenging times. Um, we've seen this community, especially with floods and other events, pull together, and, um, and that's why it's great to come back here and you know, show and, and show up for a community that's always showing up for one another. So thank you. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Representative. Thank you. Awesome.